session of Essex Town Council and I would just remind everyone to turn off your electronics so we do not interrupt the meeting at all and uh, I don't know did I call the meeting to order I do that right now anyways and we'll turn right over to our acting clerk for our closed meeting report uh, I'm, uh, I'd like to report that there was a closed session at 4.30 p.m. today pursuant to Section 239 of the Municipal Act. Council received information and or discussed matters related to proposed or pending acquisition and or disposition of land um, pursuant to Section 239, subsection 2, subsection C of the Act. Council also received information and or discussed matters related to litigation or potential litigation affecting the municipality pursuant to section 239 subsection 2 subsection e of the act thank you thank you very much i'm going to act if, ask if there are any conflict of interest amongst the council members no thank you very much and i'll turn it over to you okay. mr Brett. thank you Okay, item four on the agenda is the adoption of the published agenda. That the published agenda for the March 19th, 2018 regular council meeting be adopted as presented. Council Rogers and Council Bondi. Council Rogers, comment? I have a couple of uh, motions of, uh, of the Okay, yes, sir. You're allowed right now, sir. Town of Essex engage an engineering firm uh, to develop the required engineering to reconstruct Snake Lane in Ward 3. Okay. Thank you. Second Further. One. Upon receipt of the executive summary of the of the workplace assessment of Essex Fire and Rescue Services, council members be provided opportunity to review the original document in its entirety prior to implementation of any proposed changes or actions. This review will be prece preceded by agreement of confidentiality by the reviewing council member or members. Yeah, I do. It's kind of chopped up, but I, we can look at it. You want it right now? Yes, okay. that would be helpful through you, Your Worship. Okay. Yep. That's it. Counter riders. other additions no nope. okay thank you all in favor of that motion uh, the adoption the adoption of the minutes the agenda with the yeah all in favor opposed oh. carried 100 percent item five on the agenda is the adoption of Minutes 5.1 um, that the minutes of the regular council meeting held March 5th, 2018 be adopted as circulated. Support. Moved by Councillor Snively, supported by who yelled? Councillor Vokes. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item six on the agenda is public presentations. We have a presentation from Deputy Fire Chief Rick Malott and our manager of communications, Alex Denonville, related to the emergency alert system. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for having us tonight. Uh, tonight we're excited to announce the launch of, the, of Essex Alerts, the resident emergency alert system. Uh, it's a brand new system that we're uh, getting uh, some information out and uh, we're hoping you can help us uh, get the word out and get people to sign up. Oh. 
Uh, to start things off, uh, what is Essex Alerts? Uh, first of all, it's used in emergency situations to uh, spread important information about, uh, uh, about the emergency that's happening. Uh, it sends out uh, simultaneous notifications to all types of devices to residents that have signed on to the system. Uh, and it's also based on voluntary registration. Uh, we do have, we have uploaded a white page information that's publicly available, but it's uh, based on voluntary registration. So we're really encouraging residents to get out and uh, register for the system. Thank you. Um, this expands upon what was formerly known as the reverse 911 system, which was formerly available throughout Windsor Nessus County. Um, that infrastructure has been removed for the reverse 911 system and being the authority, during have, have authority having jurisdiction uh, replaces that system and fulfills a need during emergency management incidents to specific areas or wide range uh, contact lists. Uh, so this system is powered by Everbridge. Uh, Everbridge is a United States uh, based company that operates throughout the world. Um, it provides 24 seven support both uh, by phone and online. Uh, it's, it offers best practices and policies on how we can use the system to the best of our ability. Uh, it's also in use at a number of neighboring municipalities, uh, Kingsville, Leamington, Amherstburg, uh, LaSalle, as well as Tecumseh. Uh, it's also used in nine of the 10 largest cities in America and uh, 25 of the busiest airports. I can attest to the customer support of Everbridge. I had a problem today. I reached out and they responded pretty well immediately. Uh, the system allows residents to sign on for emergency notifications to receive to any device. So as you can see, you can receive a uh, notification to your home phone, uh, cell phone, your email, even faxes. Uh, there's also the Everbridge app, which uh, provides another chance to get notifications. Basically, when a resident is signing on, they uh, set their preferred device that they would like to receive the notifications, and that's the order of which they'll receive the notifications. So Everbridge will send out, uh, once we initiate the system, it will send out a mass notification to the preferred device, uh, and so on. It also allows you to notify, um, you can, residents, when they sign on, can set different locations. So uh, I live in Windsor, but I work in the town of Essex. So I'm able to use my work information, my work location, to uh, receive notifications for that area. Also, similarly, if you have kids in, that go to school in, in town, you'd likely want to receive notifications uh, about the school, uh, about the area around the school. So you can sign on as that, for that as well. And of course, uh, homes. One of the unique features of Everbridge in the system, the, the web-based system, allows the ability for feedback polling. Um, once an alert sent out to a targeted area or to certain contacts, uh, it allows you to add features in or add feedback questions. So in the event of uh, an emergency, the information would go out. We have the ability to also have those notifications be received and confirm that people are receiving them. Um, Additional information could also be added to that, such as resident needs. So if they are evacuating and they require assistance, they may be able to push two on their, on their device or text back with a number two, rather than one just stating that they've confirmed that and yes, they're leaving. They can, they can also say that they need assistance, which would help responders, uh, number one, understand if people are receiving the information, what majority of the, of the alerted uh, folks are, are receiving that information, and if there is folks that need, uh, need assistance in addition to that. So this is a bit of a snapshot of what Essex Alerts might look, uh, look like in action. Uh, I'm going to have Rick explain what it would look like if a disaster were to happen. So a, a basic incident, and it could be a large incident or a small incident. When the incident takes place, the responders would respond out and identify what the hazard may be. Uh, if there was an incident requiring maybe a shelter in place type of, of response from the residents or even a total evacuation uh, from a targeted specific area or a wide range area, uh, Everbridge system allows us to do that. We'll show you some mapping here moving forward of how that is possible. Uh, but basically we'd have the incident shown as a fire or maybe a gas leak. Uh, the uh, CEMC or the Community Emergency Management Coordinator would be notified to activate the system. The message would be uploaded into the system and sent out. Um, it would then be received by all of the, the, the folks that signed up for the system. 
on their chosen devices. And additionally, I have uh, the Facebook and Twitter icon. Uh, we'll have it automated so it automatically posts uh, emergency notifications to our Facebook and Twitter. And uh, social media is a huge part of communications nowadays, so it's, uh, it'll be fully automated. One of the unique features with Everbridge is the ability, like we talked about, with uh, targeting a specific area. We can choose by radius. So in this, this is just a, a brief example. We used Harrow Center. Uh, if we had an incident such as a gas leak that required a evacuation range or maybe a shelter in place range of a kilometer in, in radius of that incident, we can draw a circle around the pinpoint of where the incident was and any contacts that are signed up within that radius would automatically be notified. And feedback is live in, in real time. So as soon as they started confirming receiving those alerts, it would start showing up in the system so we'd have an idea. Uh, the next slide shows us a wide range. So if we had an instance such as flooding along a shoreline or any area, we would be able to identify, highlight that area, draw that area out on the mapping, and it would automatically pick up any contacts that fall within the highlighted area. So currently we're asking um, for residents to sign up. They can go to uh, www.essex.ca slash alerts. Uh, it is live right now, so you can feel free to go check it out, go through the registration process. Uh, it's very simple, very easy. It probably takes maybe five to ten minutes uh, to register. You enter in your preferred devices, your location, and uh, it's very simple. Um, Everbridge also offers an application that you can download on your uh, mobile device. Uh, and that application actually follows you, so if you visit another municipality uh, that uses Everbridge, it will automatically, uh, if, if a disaster was to happen in that area while you were there, it would automatically send you the notifications. Um, we're also going to have uh, support uh, for people that need assistance in registering. Uh, so by April 3rd, we'll have staff available to assist with the uh, registration and uploading of, uh, uploading of data um, for residents who, who need some assistance. And we'll also, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the marketing. So we will have a, a large marketing campaign uh, using all of our uh, communication resources to get the word out. We'll be at public events. Uh, we'll have uh, firefighters likely going door to door with uh, door knockers that you might be familiar, familiar with, with the uh, smoke alarm and carbon monoxide uh, reminders. Um, we'll also be doing some testing. So people that are already on the system through the publicly listed white page uh, information, uh, they'll receive tests to say this is a test of the emergency, the Essex Alerts uh, emergency alert system. Uh, please let us know if you receive this message and that will uh, allow us to see where we're, where we're missing data because you can look at it on the map and see who's received that information. Uh, and, and feedback from other municipalities that I've spoken to um, shows that there's been a spike in registration after, uh, after such tests. Uh, so what's next? Please visit essex.ca slash alerts. Uh, help spread the word. Tell your residents. And we will have staff available to uh, assist as of April 3rd. So thank you. And um, any questions? Thank you very much for that, Councilor Snively. Through your worship, uh, who's going to, is this going to be spearheaded through the uh, fire department or through administration or both parties involved? I would like to be both uh, communications, especially on the marketing side, getting the word out, and then uh, during the during actual emergencies, it, will, it would be spearheaded by the the CEMC. Yeah, I support this 100 percent. Now, the costing. What's what's the costing on this? A three-year worship uh, total costing was uh, uh, highlighted in the operating budget, the 2018 operating budget, at uh, just over eight thousand dollars. It was eight thousand one hundred and thirty dollars. Wow, that's great. Thank you very much. Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. So would this be for, I've got a bunch of questions, but uh, tornadoes, snowstorms, heavy rain, like IRCA, or a lot of times uh, radio stations will issue or Weather Canada will issue alerts, but will those alerts be relayed through this as well? Uh, weather events that are significant in nature that constitute an emergency for the municipality would go through the system. Uh, automatic weather alerts, though, uh, would not. So they, they do have to be generated. It's any emergency event that uh, the CEMC, along with, with uh, administration and or mayor and council, deem as an emergency to the municipality 
would go out through the notification system. What about um, construction issues? Um, I, you're talking about fires and, and uh, evacuations. Um, I'm just wondering what, like, is there a list somewhere of the events that are going to be, because the first thing I think that we're going to be asked is, well, what kind of events are going to be? And are we going to be aware of all the events? Should residents be calling in to let someone know? And who's that contact they should be letting know that there's uh, something going on in the community that maybe the fire department wouldn't know about? Uh, through the chair. Uh, we will be using this. It's designed specifically for emergencies as, as defined by the CEMC. Um, we we want to get away from uh, non-emergencies so we're not constantly sending out information. Um, could you repeat the second question, sorry? I was wondering if residents would have an opportunity to call something in to whoever's controlling the information being put up as an alert. Yes, so uh, through the chair, the uh, same process would happen. It would ultimately be inputted, the, the message would be inputted by the CEMC or the director, or sorry, the manager of communications uh, who has access to upload the alert. Uh, so that channel would be able to go through town they, they, if they started off by calling the emergency number or the, the after hours call number for the town. That information would have to be routed through to either the manager of communications or the CEMC and then post it on to the alert system. Mr. Mayor, can I continue? Or? Yeah, sure. Um, what about police alerts? Uh, if there's like, let's say there's a bank robbery and there's a, they know the robbers in the, in the area. They want to let people know to keep their doors locked or something like that. Um, police do not have access to our system, the, the town system right now. Um, that would be something that we would have to work through the police with to have that channel of communication if they had emergency information that needed to be broadcasted. Again, they would have to notify the CEMC or the manager of communications and have it posted on there. But that is something we could work for. The other one I was wondering about was nuclear plant. Uh, I know that Amherstburg's very concerned about being so close to a nuclear plant, but we are not that far from that nuclear plant. Uh, we're just a stone's throw away from Amherstburg, most of us, and uh, would that come up on the alert as well if there was something? Uh, on that specific question, exactly. The, in the nuclear plant for Amherstburg and Fermi 2, any type of incident that they have uh, that goes on there, it is right in the plan, in the nuclear plan for that uh, facility that they would contact uh, the town of Essex and uh, specifically the CEMC for any type of emergency relating to that. Uh, Amherstburg would contact us immediately after they were contacted um, by the U.S. Okay, and I'll just, I'll ask one more and I'll leave some questions for some other people, but um, I'm forgetting what question I had. This was uh, in regard to, oh, so can you have more than one device alerted? Yes, I believe the system allows up to eight independent devices per contact. Um, and it can be any of the supported devices such as smartphones, fax machines, home phone, email. Uh, the system will continuously scroll through those devices until someone confirms that they've received the message on one of those selected devices. So if they've uploaded eight devices, and they don't receive it until it comes through on the fifth device, it's going to continue until they confirm it, or it'll c continue to start over and calling those devices on an interval. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilor Bjorkman. Thank you. Thank you very much for that report. Uh, it is something that Council uh, was asking to see in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, if there was an opportunity for us to do that, and when you upgraded that system, it's great that it's coming forward now for our residents. Uh, I like everything and the questions are all good. Maybe I missed it. The, the CMC, who is the CMC and, and what, what does that stand for and, and who is that body? The CMC, and my apologies, is the, is the Community Emergency Management Coordinator uh, for the Municipality of Essex. That is the Fire Chief also. It's, it's his secondary role. Um, he also has two, uh, two alternates, which is myself and also Assistant Deputy Chief Jason Pilon. So in his absence, it would be myself or Assistant Pilon. Okay, thank you. Councilor Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, couple real quick questions. First one, uh, severe weather alerts. Are they going to be coming 
only from whether Canada or do we will they be coming from the U.S. as well and and coming into this system for us to know? And uh, my question or my why I'm asking that is uh, down in this area we usually find that uh, Canada weather broadcasts el eliminate us or forget about us till the last minute. We get our weather mostly information from the U.S. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes and yes and no. Um, again, the information that would have to be posted to this is not an automatic. Uh, it's not an automatic weather alert system. So uh, be mindful of the fact that this is an emergency notification system, not an automatic a notification system. Meaning, it's not pulling information from weather outlets and rebroadcasting that information. If there was a specific weather alert that was that that needed to go out or as, an, as a result of an event, or pending events that may happen after emergencies, that would have to be uploaded. Um, being from the area and being familiar with the same type of situation you're explaining with weather, conflicting weather uh, news outlets, uh, we do constantly try and monitor both. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's difficult due to the weather and the, and the way the alerts come. It's not, uh, it's not a system that's designed to replace automatic weather alerts such as weather alert radios uh, or those other devices. Uh, in some certain circumstances, uh, Environment Canada does try and alert uh, early on. Um, we have seen events before where that may be afterwards or that we may be getting, we may be able to get uh, pre-notification from a, a U.S. news or weather, uh, but again, it's, it's not an automatic system, so that's something that's going to have to be watched, and if it is something that warrants further notification above and beyond, we'd have to do that manually. Okay, my second question, yes. Uh, you mentioned $8,000, uh, is that a, a, an annual an implement, implementation cost? Yes. Uh, so it's annual. annual. And is there a cost per subscriber? N not per prescriber, that was the overall cost based on the total number of residents. Okay, so as, as a prescriber to this, or, or, I'm not getting a charge of five dollars a month or or right. per year or anything like that. Okay, Correct. thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Oh, Ava. Ava has a oh yes, young lady. How are you? Don't. Um, so I was wondering, does this work through Wi-Fi, or if I was on the bus to school, would I get an alert for this, or do I have to be connected to something, or have my data on? To the chair, uh, you don't have to have your data on. Uh, if you have set uh, as SMS, so that goes through, um, it's, not, it's not data, so you will still receive, like you can receive notifications um, just through text message, uh, but doesn't ha you don't have to be connected through data. Anything further? Okay, looking for a motion to receive the report. Councilor Snively, Councilor Riders. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Any opposed? No. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, item, uh, there's no unfinished business on the agenda tonight, so we'll move to item eight, reports from administration. Item 8.1, Corporate Services Report 2018-03. That Corporate Services Report 2018-03, entitled Extension Agreement McPherson, recommending the town enter into an extension agreement for the payment of outstanding taxes be received, and that bylaw 1680 um, be read a first, a second, and a third time, and finally passed this evening. Moved by Councillor Bundy and supported by Councillor Rogers. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Item 8.2. Uh, okay. Item 8.2. Uh, that Community Services Report 2018-004 entitled April Pools Day and Community CPR Day, uh, informing Council of the April Pools Day and Community CPR Day on Saturday, April 7th at the Essex Recreation Complex be received. 
Moved by Deputy Mayor Malosh, supported by Councillor Rogers. Any questions? All in favor of that motion? Opposed? Motion carries. Item 8.3, that Community Services Report 2018-006, entitled 2018 Communities in Bloom Legacy Tree Program, informing Council of the Legacy Tree Program partnership with the six elementary schools in the Town of Essex to recognize Earth Day on Friday, April 20th, 2018, be received. Moved by a Councillor Snivy, supported by Councillor Bondi. Any questions? Deputy Mayor Malash. Just a quick comment, and I know it takes a team to make things happen, and I, I, I commend the Communities in Bloom uh, group for making this happen, but there was one individual on that on that group, Mary Malosh, out of McGregor, that really pushed for this for years, and we finally found some funding. She was instrumental in, in making this uh, move forward, and I just want to say uh, thanks, Mary, for, for doing that. She listens to us sometimes, and I'd like to give her credit for it. Excellent. Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a little bit further on this. Uh, this has happened for the last few years, and uh, we never really see too many council people out there. And we'd like to like to see a few more council people. If you can attend uh, our tree plantings, it would be great. Thank you. Uh, I've been there. It's tough to get the kids there during the day because you can get them out of school. It's tough to get a lot of these people out of their jobs. Okay. I'm just speaking on behalf of the ones that are workers. All in favor? Votes. Motion carries. Okay. Item 8.4, that Community Services Report 2018-007, entitled Special Events Resource Team CERT March Update, be received. Moved by Councillor Volk, supported by Councillor Bondi. Any questions? Oh, oh. No. All in favor? Motion carries. Item 8. Point, excuse me. Ed, item 8.5, that Building Department Report 2018-02, entitled February 2018 Building Report, providing Council with an update on building activity for the month of February, be received. Moved by Councillor Vogt and supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 8.6, uh, related to agriculture-related activities in the zoning bylaw for wards 2 and 3. The planning report 2018-11, um, informing Council that revisions are being considered to the town's general zoning bylaw 1037 in order to bring closer conformity with the guideline provisions of Ontario's guidelines on permitted uses in Ontario's prime agricultural areas be tabled for public review. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malosh, supported by Council Rogers. Any questions? Deputy Mayor Malosh. Yes, through you, Your Worship, to uh, Mr. Watson, our policy planner. Um, so do we need uh, do we need to have open houses for this or is this just something that we can uh, go ahead and it's an improvement definitely to the uh, to what farmers and and uh, residents in rural areas businesses in rural areas can do but I, I just wondered if we had to have an open house on this mr. Watson through, through mr. mayor that's correct you have to have a statutory public meeting that's a requirement under the Planning Act so we'll be scheduling one of those probably sometime late April So, uh, keeping in mind this is something rural, um, where are we going to be having the meetings or meeting? Actually, the Colchester uh, Community Centre worked very well when we had our community improvement plan. And since it's focused on County Road 50, uh, where most of that type of activity will likely occur, I think that's probably a good location. We do have other businesses, though, that are represented or farm businesses throughout the community. So there will be sufficient notice to those so that they get out there if we're only going to have the one meeting? Through you, Mr. Mayor, notice will be given in both newspapers. And uh, yes, you're correct. I mean, the, 
the, the, the principal uses that we're concerned about are the on-farm diversified uses. And those are uses that the province opened up to um, farmers as a, a secondary source of income, you know, basically to, you know, to maintain farm as a, farming as a uh, resilient industry in this area and in Ontario. And um, I think a lot of the, the comments we've received are tied directly into the, the Colchester County Road 50 CIP. And, uh, and that's likely where we'll see most of the, the, these kinds of activities take place first because there's a lot of opportunities for a diverse range of uses. The, in, throughout the rest of the town, uh, it's more likely to be farm-related activities or, or, more, or more closely related to the type of activities that farm families do anyway. So um, it really it's up to council to decide where the best venue would be. As I say, we've tied it to the Colchester CIP primarily but I mean, it's an activity that could take place anywhere in the town. Thank you very much. Anyone else? On favor of the motion. Motion carries. Item 8.7. <clears throat> That planning report 2018-12 entitled Colchester and County Road 50 Community Improvement Plan, Ward 3, recommending the preparation of a bylaw to provide for the expansion of the Colchester Center Community Improvement Plan be received, and that council authorize the preparation of a bylaw to provide for the expansion of the Colchester Center Community Improvement Plan to take in the lands fronting on the north and south sides of County Road 50 from County Road 41 to Dunn Road and from County Road 13 to County Road 23 and the south lakefront side of Adelaide Road west of Dunn Road. Moved by Councillor Snively, supported by Councillor Rogers. Any questions? Councillor Rogers. Not a question, Mr. Mayor, uh, just a comment. I'm, I'm very much in favor of uh, the community and uh, improvement plan. However, I find that we we fall sh shy a little bit in that we can't include many you know m more of our, our businesses throughout our, our uh, town. Uh, we have many businesses, such as a few wineries that uh, aren't located along County Row 50, that uh, cannot tap into a, a community improvement uh, program at all. And uh, it's unfortunate. I don't know if uh, we can work on that and see what we can do in the future, uh, being able to uh, uh, include some of these more outlying businesses that uh, certainly. Uh, get a lot of uh, attention or, or viewing by uh, traveling, uh, uh, you know, people traveling through our community, and uh, they should be able to improve their their uh, uh, business as well. Thank you. Anything further, Deputy Mayor Malash? Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor, and, and I want to express the same uh, opinion. Uh, you know, we're expanding the uh, CP CIP program in Colchester, but we do not have anything in McGregor. And uh, that's something that we've talked about. I know Councillor Vokes has brought it up as well. Uh, we've been talking about uh, moving in that direction for a very long time. Uh, but here we are, we're expanding in. Uh, and I know we're just adding on to a current CPI, but I think we need to be looking at McGregor as well. Um, as far as what uh, Councillor Councilor, uh, Rogers was saying as well, there are other businesses, not just wineries, that are throughout the town, uh, that are in rural areas that are feeling the pinch because their competitors that are within a, uh, an urban area, and then all of a sudden now we're creating a, a friction between urban and rural because we're saying that, well, you want a concentrated area for a CIP. But the problem is, is that if you have businesses that are outside of that area, why are we not treating them? They're all within the boundaries of the borders of the town of Essex. They should all be treated the same, all the businesses. We're giving the edge to certain businesses by giving them a CIP to improve their businesses, yet businesses that are outside of that area, we have nothing for them. So I think that we need to be creative here and try and figure out a way that we can help out those businesses that are outside of those larger urban areas or concentrated areas of uh, development. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilor Bondi and Councilor Snively. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think back to the history of when we created the CIP and why we created the CIP. And the first community that we started with was Harrow Center. And we, we started with Harrow Center because we said we, there was like a, almost like an urban blight there. Like 
like if you're feeling not feeling well, you want to make sure that your heart is, is in really good condition rather than a hangnail, for example. So we started with the area that needed the most, the most resources. And then we moved it to Essex Center because we hear those comments that downtown Essex looks awful, right? So that's, that's why we did that. So I'm not opposed to having those creative conversations, but I think before we have those creative conversations, we really need to have a budget discussion because I, I am opposed to expanding the CIP at the expense of the areas that have the CIP funds. And I'll speak to Harrow because Essex Center came knocking on our door and took some of our CIP funds. And then Colchester Center came knocking on our door and took some of our CIP funds. So I don't want to to spread the money so thin that we're not seeing the results. So maybe it's a budget conversation, a strategic visioning conversation with what do we want to do with our limited dollars in Essex. And when I think of the CIP in Harrow and Essex and now Colchester, I think of marketing uh, locations, not marketing a specific business, not helping out a specific business. I think of marketing a destination. Uh, Harrow is a wellness destination. Uh, the, Long County Road 50 is a tourism destination. We're not saying, you businesses here, we like what you're doing. We're saying we want to market this as a destination, as a tourism a center. So that's how I see it. But I think we have to look at the 2019 budget if we're going to keep expanding the CIP. And we haven't had a mechanism. We did have one budget meeting. But council has not had a mechanism to talk about the 2019 budget. And it's really not our budget because we might not all be here. So I think we're kind of stuck up in the air right now with really what to do next. We can, we can throw it at the wall and see if it sticks, but I think it's up to the next term of council to see really how much further are we going to expand because it's a budgetary item now. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Snively. Through your worship, um, I have to agree with the deputy mayor and councilor votes and councilor Rogers. This is an opportunity for us to expand outwards with these businesses. Uh, you know, like the business in McGregor is one business there. Why shouldn't he be entitled to it? Um, we have cars uh, just east of Harrow. Why shouldn't he be included? But uh, I, I think that everybody, you know, all business should be um, equal. And everybody, I think, should have the opportunity to take advantage of our CIP. I, I think fair is fair. and. and why should certain businesses, because they're just in the commercial area, and and let's say business is a mile outside the area, and he's not entitled to it. So I agree it should be expanded out. Thank you. Anything further? Councilor Vokes. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was raising this once before. The reality is, is that as a council, we shouldn't be part and partial to picking and choosing. And the way the CIP plan set up right now, that's what we're doing. And there's, there's historic, historical events in the CIP plan right now where, where Deputy Mayor Mawash right now could be entitled to it based on where he's sitting, but I'm almost right beside him, and I can't get it. So there's no justice and fairness in that. The way we're spelling it out and the way the application for it's not fair. And I know there's limitations to how you can do it. I'm, aw I'm aware of that. But it's just not fair. Because to me, Everybody, every business in the town of Essex is important. We shouldn't be handpicking and perimetering who gets it and who doesn't. So we got to take a look, as, as, as uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Malash has, has talked to and reiterating, we really do have to spend some time in the boardroom at the town hall and figure out what we're going to do to make that a little more balanced. Because it's a great program. It's got great harvest to it. But it's fallen short in terms of opportunities for all of those. Thank you. Councilor Snivy? Just one last thing, Your Worship. Um, to Jeff, uh, it, through the province, are we allowed to expand it out? That's, that's my question. Is there provincial guidelines? Yes, sir. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, you can make the entire town of Essex a CIP project area. The, 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 in the old days, you had to justify this to the province, and the province and county were the approval authorities. That's changed now. So you can, you can expand it. Uh, the, the reason why we focused uh, on, on specific areas was simply for Harrow, for example, it was a result of the Harrow strategic plan that a, a CIP was probably a, a desirable thing to do in that area. 
and uh, and again the same thing happened when we looked at Essex Center. So these areas have evolved as the need arose and as we saw a reason that you know why this could this could work. And um, so far we focused on areas that have certain key components to them that make them have a common set of characteristics which make it you know a, a CIP project area and that's what the province looks at is is this is a project area what does it share what do the uses share in common what are the the common needs and how can how can a CIP program address that so you would have to make the argument that that all of the, the town of Essex shares a common need and would benefit from a CIP program thank you for that councillor Vokes so, in, so thank you. So in, in hearing that information from our, our policy planner, Jeff Watson, then then if, if council agrees, and I don't care who does it, somebody put a motion forward where we talk about it at the next council meeting in the form of motion, we could pass as early as the next council meeting. Why delay it? Why delay it? If we can, if we can introduce it and we can get it rolling, why not? Based on wh where, where there are no longer limitations, if we can spell it out to the whole town. I'm sorry. We'll find. Look at we got. We got. If I could, we got. We got thousands and thousands of dollars sitting in the reserve fund for the landfill. And to say we don't have money is is not true. We do have money. If if we didn't have no reserves, then we didn't have money. We don't have money. But we have reserves, and because we have reserves, we have money, and money's there to be spent especially in this case of enhancing stores who are struggling every day. So and that's where council's got to step up and, and say, we're going to take that money out of reserve. So at least have the discussions on where the money's going to come from. Because I think, I don't believe we got to wait till the next budget to do it when we got money sitting in a reserve. Our CEO thought Mr. Watson, you should have a comment to this latest one. Not at the very last sentence or two, but previous. This is Hunter. Your Worship, I was just, it, it, Councillor Brooks was suggesting that we could do this instantly. Or at least I was getting that impression. I may be wrong, Councillor. I just wanted Jeff to have the opportunity to explain the process that we have to go through when we expand the CIP program. Mr. Watson. Well, as I say, the, the, the key consideration would be establishing the CIP project area because we our CIP programs are pretty much identical throughout each one of the communities that they apply to. So, in terms of the grants that are offered and the and the you know the applications that are required and things like that, it's pretty much the same. So, it's really a question of, of, of determining what is a reasonable project area, whether it's the whole town or, or parts of the town, and and basically providing a justification for why we want to do that. Uh, dollars, and s dollars, of course, are important as part of that, but really, as far as satisfying the province and, and, and the policies of the province and the county, um, it's more a question of, of saying why this project area is, is, is important as far as a CIP program is concerned. Thank you, sir. Councilor Vokes. Thank you. To, to, uh, to, to Jeff Watson, our, our, our treasurer, how much money right now do we have in the landfill reserve? Folks, I, I'm going to, there's a point of order. We're not discussing this this evening. It's not on the agenda. I don't want you, to discuss it. I just but we know. are. You're trying to sell the fact that we're going to do something in the future. That's And I'm getting this from administration. This isn't the chair asking you not to continue with this. Oh, oh if I could, non-argumentally. And I'm not arguing. Know, all We're I want to know. All, all I want to know, so I can know, recognize in two weeks from now, when we bring a motion for it, how much money is in, in the landfill reserve. That's all I want to know. I don't want this. I guy. know. Okay. If I may, you want to know. Yeah. I've been told you're okay. not going to Fine. know tonight. Fine. We shouldn't be discussing this. Yes, no That's problem. all I'm saying. No problem. Okay. Where were we? Councillor Bondi. Oh, no. okay. oh, you had your hand up. No? All done? Okay. Anyone else? No eyes. Let's quit making eyes in council. Okay, Jane? People, please, please, please. 
if I ready could, for the question if, if I could councillor vote yeah because I wasn't actually looking up when you said that for clarity for the record who was making eyes it doesn't matter okay I see it going on and I'm not going to center okay. anybody here all right okay. just let's be a right. council that's working together okay ready for the question all in favor motion carries if I could can I put a motion for it? Councilor Vogt. I'd like to put a motion for it at the next meeting. We talk about no. the op No, that's, no. Yes. <clears throat> Notice a motion later on, sir. Okay, well, not right, right now. now. Okay. As, as long as we do it before we go home tonight. And, and by the way, that's why I wanted a spot for notices of motion in the meeting agendas. Thank you. All in favor? Motion carries. Item 8.8, .8, uh, that clerk's report 2018-04, entitled Appointment of Animal Control Appeal Committee, recommending the appointment of three members to the Animal Control Appeal Committee be received, and that council appoint Diane Pouget, Richard Kokove, and Paul Tonin as members of the Animal Control Appeal Committee for the limited purpose of adjudicating an upcoming appeal. by Councillor Bonney, supported by Councillor Rogers, with a comment. Thank you. I think uh, these are very good choices. Uh, with one, w not with one change, or with one small change. Uh, Paul Tonin, he was uh, one of our Community in Bloom uh, chairs. Not just a member, he was a chair. And very good. Anyone else? All in favor of that motion? Motion carries. Item 8.9, um, that drainage report 2018-02, entitled Appointment of a Drainage Engineer to Prepare a Report for Repairs and Improvements to Maple Avenue Drain be received, and that Council appoint the engineering firm of Rood Engineering Incorporated to prepare said report. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malash, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one question. I used to live on Maple Avenue, and I remember that on my taxes there was a drainage report being paid for. So I don't know if Mr. Nepsey knows how long ago they they went through a drainage report. It just seems like really soon again. Mr. Nepsey? Yeah, uh, through your worship, I think in the, in the report it notes the last drainage report. I think was done 68 so I'm not sure what you were you it might have been maintenance or something that you were you were being billed for I, I'll investigate and let you know okay anything further country Rogers thank you mr. mayor I want to make one comment uh, council meeting a couple of weeks ago we had quite a go to go to back and forth about uh, uh, rude uh, engineering and how uh, there were council members that thought, well, maybe we should have a second opinion. Uh, we're appointing Rude uh, Engineering for this uh, this report, and I hope that uh, we, we will accept the report that we get and not uh, start uh, uh, talking about second opinions because there's people on the drain that uh, aren't in, in favor of it. Thank you. And I'll second that. Anything further? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 8.10, that Infrastructure Development Report 2018-03, uh, entitled Engineering Consulting Services for Culvert ID Number 200302 at the 4th Concession in Drummond Road, and the request to Council to waive requirements for pro proposals, tenders, and quotations be received, and that in accordance with the request uh, under Section 22.3 of the Town's Procurement Bylaw, Council appoint R.C. Spencer Associates to provide engineering design and construction services. Moved by Council Rogers? No, no. Moved by Council Okay. I'll support. Uh, moved by Council Bondi, seconded by the Mayor. Council Rogers first and then... Uh, I just want to ask why we are uh, going beyond our, our usual procedure for uh, appointing an engineer on this. 
um, is this an emergency situation that we have to get at right away or something to that effect please mr. Nepsey please uh, through your worship, as outlined in the report, uh, the reason that we're, we're looking to bypass our procurement uh, in this particular instance is R.C. Spencer is currently doing contract administration for three of our bridges, as well as uh, was awarded the RFP for um, another bridge this year. Uh, so they're a successful proponent in a, in a fully transparent tendering process. In terms of timelines and making sure that this bridge is designed and tendered this year, uh, it was thought to um, award the design to R.C. Spencer as well, just to have those economies of scale in both design and construction costs. Sir Mitchell Rogers. Yes, and uh, further to that, I would like to apologize then because I, I got in late last night, have not had an opportunity to review the agenda to the full extent that I usually do, and uh, I did not see that in when, I, in when I was looking through the report that uh, they were involved in other culverts, but I do understand that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Snively. Oh, I'm good. oh, you're good. Anyone else? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 9 on the agenda is reports from youth members. We'll go to the ladies first. Um, tonight I would just like to say that I have talked to Mr. Sweet and my squire, the Squirates of Mary will be putting on a Easter egg hunt March 30th in the McGregor Parkette. Mr. Mayor Malash? Uh, what time, Ava? Um, we're doing breakfast first this year, so be there for around 9, and then the Easter egg hunts will follow. And it's a donation of socks or underwear to get in, and it will be donated to St. Vincent de Paul. Thank you. Um, March 30th. Councilor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. To our youth rep, is breakfast, can you buy breakfast too? Uh, it's all included with your donation. Okay, and breakfast is across the street? Yeah, it's at the hall. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Country Bjorkman. Thank you. That's a great initiative. Now, is our director of communications aware of that so that we can make sure it's on our on our website and that we get that information out to to the public? And how about you, mister? Um, I have nothing to report today. Okay, good. Good to see you here. Motion to receive that, please. Councilor Bonney, Councilor Rogers. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. <laughs> Item 10 is the County Council update. Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to bring uh, a point of interest up that would be uh, something that our council would be interested in is that uh, the fact that our last county council meeting that uh, we passed um, a request from our tourism industry to put out an application for uh, AMO conference here in Windsor Essex uh, we're gonna the county of Essex is gonna partner with the city of Windsor in a bid uh, which has already gone forward uh, for the years 2020 21 <coughs> 22 and 23 I believe so it's four years that we're gonna be bidding for it's not likely that you would get all four bit years. We'd probably get one of those four years. But uh, in the last, uh, the last round of um, these, currently there's four years in a row that it's going to be going to Ottawa because they just rebuilt their um, convention center. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. They rebuilt their convention center, and part of the uh, Part of the requirement for them to uh, rebuild their convention center was the fact that AMO would come there for four years and they would give them a good deal in, in setting up shop there. So that's for four years. Uh, the four years after that, it's going to be bids. We're hoping to get it, but uh, be ready to do some volunteering. They're going to be asking uh, members of the community and uh, some of our staff to be able to uh, participate and help out in making sure that we put our best foot forward. Uh, we, we still, uh, to date, have um, a lot of visitors that have come back from across the province because of this AMO conference that have come back. Uh, they, they've uh, had an opportunity to see our wineries and they love the area once they're down here to check it out 
and we want to continue on. If we can get at least one of those years out of those four years, this is going to do a, a fantastic uh, shot in the arm for our tourism business here. Uh, whatever year it is, and uh, whoever's on council at that time should really take a look to see if there's something that the town of Essex can do to promote. Um, there's all <coughs> kinds of ideas that maybe they can come, you can come up with. I've got several of my own, but um, that's to be said once uh, we get the, uh, the bid. So I just wanted to bring that up as a point of information for council. I just might add to what Deputy Mayor Malosh said, but there was great discussion with regards to how much the county puts in compared to the city of Windsor because pretty well everything happens in the city of Windsor and all their hotels are full and everything, but Leamington isn't full and whatever. But it was stated by the Mayor de Cumpsey that uh, every tour was filled to capacity and that's going out our way, Leamington, Kingsville, Colchester to the wineries and the talk was how great it was going out there just like Deputy Mayor Malai said. So the county is tickled paint to be able to have this happen in our area again because there's nothing but good things come from it. So thank you for that. Richard? Uh, motion to receive Richard's report, Councillor Bjorkman and Councillor Rogers. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 11 on the agenda is correspondence. 11.1 .1 correspondence to be received. There are six items under agenda item 11.1, .1, uh, and the motion is that correspondence listed in this item be received and we're indicated to further share such information with the community using suitable methods of communication. Thank you. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malash, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. With a question, Councillor Bjorkman. Yeah, just two items, 11.1.6, uh, John Scott's resignation, that we accept that with regret and thank him for his time and, uh, and support for our, our town. Um, and then just to bring attention to uh, Councillor Bondi brought forward the, uh, the notice of, of getting schools for a dollar, making sure that when community schools and small towns lose that, the very good support um, from a number of townships um, that have picked up on that. So a great uh, step to take, and then that's all going to AMO and FCM as well. So hopefully we get something from that. Exactly. Good job, Councillor Bondi. Councillor Vokes? Has somebody come forward to fill the vacancy of John Scott? Um, through you, Your Worship, I didn't, we don't have anybody at the moment. Uh, what we were going to, I think, come back to Council with was the list of people that have had applied from the last um, newspaper advertisement and let Council make a decision from that. Okay, so because I'll put my name in to fill that vacancy. And I want that on record. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Anything else with regards to the correspondence? No, nope. all in favor? Receipt, motion carries. Item 11.2 is correspondence to be considered for receipt and support. Um, there's one item from uh, Jesse Voyer and Bradley Toman. The motion is that the email from Jesse Voyer and Bradley Toman dated March 1st, 2018, seeking council's permission for an exemption from the Town of Essex Noise Bylaw 690 at 57 Park Lane in Essex on May 20th, 2018, be received or received and approved and that if council chooses to support the request, a copy of correspondence be sent to the bylaw department and the Ontario Provincial Police Essex Detachment. Support. By Councillor Volk, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Councillor Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I certainly understand what they're looking for, you know, for having a wedding. Uh, but I would, but they, and they suggest in the, in the document that, uh, they're going to notify their neighbors, etc. I think before they come to council, they should have already notified their neighbors and, and given us indication that that had already been done and that their neighbors were basically on board before we waive the uh, uh, 
the noise or bylaw part of it, the noise part. Thank you. Anyone else? Makes sense. Yeah. All in favor of that motion, then. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, item 12 is committee meeting minutes. Uh, that correspondence listed in agenda item 12 together with any recommendations noted therein be received and adopted as circulated. The two sets of uh, minutes from the Essex Centre BIA from January 9th and the Finance Committee from March 12th. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malash, Councilor Bjork, and then supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 13, 13.1, uh, 13 bank payments report. Oh, by <laughs> which Shall one I read it that? first? No. no. Okay. Randy. Councilor Vokes moves, supported by Councilor Rogers. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Uh, notices of motion that we're bringing back from March 5th. Uh, there are two, 15.1.1. Uh, from Councillor Bondi, that administration look at the development of a business closure prevention strategy and, if unavoidable, conduct exit interviews upon businesses closing or leaving the town of Essex. Okay, this has been moved by Councillor Bondi. She's looking for a seconder. Deputy Mayor Malash. Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It, it kind of just came up as, a, as an idea of, of something that we should look at. And, and I really think that maybe we should have a brainstorming session or administration have a brainstorming session and, and come back to us or, or we think about it and, and then think of what we could do because there was a couple of businesses that closed in Harrow and then there was one recently that closed in Essex Center. They closed because of a relocation. And I read in the paper that they were going into retirement and then a couple a month later there was a letter to the editor saying that nobody from town council or nobody from administration approached them so i was kind of like eek you know eek and there was a business in harrow that closed and i did and this is a while ago and i i called the owner and i said what happened like tell me what happened so i know and she said um, that it was a lot of locals didn't support her store and the minimum wage increasing in the future, This because it closed six months ago, was a factor and um, staffing, finding good staff was a factor. So I really think that we're doing a lot of things right in the town. We have the CIP program, we're working on development fees, tourismessex.ca is fabulous, but I think there's a, another loop that we could come at come in and double back so I don't know and I know Ann Moskowski when she was with us she did some type of survey some type of business climate survey I couldn't find it but it might be good to rehash and make sure Mr. Silvera looks through it and, and has access to it but can we as a council in a town look at some hurdles our existing businesses are having like what are those hurdles can we narrow them down and can we focus on those for example I think I think the snow removal that we do in the winter is, a, is an asset. That helps business. So we want to continue with that. I, I've heard, since this notice of motion has gone out there, I've got feedback already. I've heard that taxes are an issue. I've heard that not having a hotel in Harrow, Colchester is an issue. Um, you know, some things that businesses really like is street cleaning, right? So like, let's, let's find out what those hurdles are for our businesses and and see how we can and ha see how we can work on those now, because I think we have a good handle on the grants and the improvements. But let's talk about business retention now, because everything that we've learned from conferences, the limited conferences I've gone through, is that retaining businesses, retaining existing businesses, is less work than attracting new businesses. So that's what we want to focus on: is retaining our businesses that we have, supporting them and also attracting them but so I don't know I don't have an answer 
I just think that exit interviews could be useful. Like, let's go to the, the business, let's, let's start conducting exit interviews. Let's collect information. We can even collect information for six months and, and, then, and then bring that back and bring that forward. I don't know. I was just thinking, and I thought it's a really good, healthy conversation to have with council, with administration, because we're doing lots of great things, but I think we can do more. <laughs> so that's kind of all. I'm just throwing it out there and seeing what sticks at this point. Uh, our clerk, Mrs. Hunter, and then Councilor Vokes and Councilor Snively. To you, Your Worship. Um, I think maybe Nelson, we, if we could call on Nelson just to talk about this a little bit because him and I have had discussion about this this morning and today. And I think there's things that are being done that maybe Council is not aware of. So if I may, if we could turn to Mr. Silvera, that would be very Nelson, thank you very much. Thank you, through your worship. Uh, last March, we did a business climate survey. Uh, so we sat down with 14, um, 14 businesses within the town of Essex and try and gauge you know, what the business climate was like, how they enjoyed doing business in Essex. If there was any red flags uh, that came up in that survey, then we followed up. What we can do moving forward is research a business retention and expansion plan. I mean, other communities have that. Um, we could partner with OMAFRA or the Ministry of Economic Development and Growth in terms of um, you know, greater capacity to do some sort of a survey. I know uh, OMAFRA does um, surveys in other municipalities where um, they, they send some of their staff over and partner up with the municipality to do a uh, business retention and expansion survey, kind of gauge the community a little bit more. We're planning another one for May with the Windsor Essex Economic Development Corporation. Um, so, and we're doing things for, you know, improving the business climate, CIP program, downtown beautification. Um, we're doing things to kind of support the retention of business and the expansion, but you're completely right. I mean, if there's a business that um, is planning to expand, it's most likely already within the community. And it's important that we look after the businesses that are already in our community. Um, and that's one of the ways of doing that, is, is doing a survey, uh, knocking on doors, boots on the ground. I know the BIA is out there working hard, um, boots on the ground again, uh, talking to businesses, seeing what, seeing what the business climate is like. And, uh, you know, we're going to move forward to something in May. And I think, I think it would be good to, to talk to OMAFRO or the Ministry of Economic Development and Growth and see if there's some kind of a program that they have um, that could maybe assist us in developing a business retention expansion plan. Finish. Councillor Bunny? Okay. Uh, Councillor Bokes and Councillor Snively. Thank you. I, just, just in terms of... of, of helping businesses councillor bondi wherever we can I, I like your energy on that because the reality is is that we're, we're always trying to find ways and i want to say we are all we are always trying to find ways as a council to help businesses so so that's so we're doing remotely everything we can today and i want to go on record on and say something because in terms of the the uh Essex party and discount store and the letter to the editor which made you run the flag up the pole to start talk about businesses and how we can help the reality is and for the purpose of clarity especially with the media here is we helped that business prior to him closing his doors I helped trying to relocate that business I had another finance another real estate opportunity in Essex so he didn't have to close this gentleman right here and I believe his wife Mary Ann through the BIA tried to help and that's on record. So we do, we do try to help where we can. In terms of the hotel, we actually have, you know, we have a hotel coming. Or we're looking at trying to figure out some way to get a hotel in Essex. So we're, we're doing all those positive things. And I heard you mention the conference. That, that, and, and I need to remind people the conference in, in terms of the last one that was held in Essex. Is that conference was held in Windsor. And, we talk, and in that conference, they talked about jobs and securing businesses. And me and you talked about it, Councillor Bondi, on a sidebar through telephone. I believe it was the t-shirts were bought, bought in China for that conference. So, so the, when I hear conferences and stuff coming out and jobs and, 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 and securities, I, I question the integrity of that. So anyways, I'm just saying that we're doing, I, I like your energy, but we're doing everything I believe we can to help businesses where we can. Okay, I have Councillor Snively, Councillor Deputy Mayor Malash, and then Councillor Bjorkman. Through your worship, um, 
Um, I, I, I think a big problem with businesses in our in an, in in downtown area, both Essex and Harrell, is residential growth. We need residential growth. Residential growth and commercial growth they go together. And uh, you know, working on trying to get like hotel or motel, counselor votes is great. Uh, it's great we're 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 going that direction and. Uh, just to let council know, we have set up a meeting. You know, uh, Nelson is meeting with somebody, I think, this Thursday to do something maybe in that, that category in the town of uh, Harrow, uh, Colchester, Harrow area. So, but uh, if we go east of here into another town, which I won't mention name, it's booming. And we all know that. And it's all because of residential growth. They can't build enough homes. And, it, and residential supports commercial. And if you go downtown, that, that town there, and look at the traffic and the people downtown, uh, and that's all because of residential growth. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Deputy Mayor Malarch. Yes, I just want to uh, applaud Councillor Bondi. That was a great uh, motion to bring forward. Um, and I think that our EDO is, has probably looked at some of this as well. So uh, just as far as uh, giving our EDO some direction that uh, council is, thinks that this is a good direction to go in if that, you know, if you have the opportunity to be able to uh, pursue, pursue more of the exit interviews. But uh, one of the things I wanted to put forward too was all these things that we do for businesses in the town. Uh, we think that we're doing them for the businesses, but actually we're doing it a lot of it for the residents. Because when I personally, when I was going door to door uh, in the last election, a lot of the residents in the rural areas were saying, "What are what's council doing to bring more business or to keep the businesses that we have in town?" Because we want to be able to shop in our local towns. We hate the fact that we don't have this or we don't have that. We want to be able to go to Essex or to Harrow or McGregor for that matter, and be able to have those conveniences in our own small towns. That's the reason why we live where we live. We want, we like that atmosphere. So when we do something for commercial businesses uh, in any of our urban centers like that, we are actually doing it for everybody. We, we truly are. So because our residents want to have the ability to shop within our own towns. So I, I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilor Bjorkman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think there's a lot of good uh, movement this way as well. I think you get a lot of good data. We could we could take things that were instead of we think this happens or we think they do this or we think you you've actually got a set of data from the people who are experiencing it. Um, one of the things we do, the CIP was actually generated for existing businesses. Probably most for sure, most of the CIP is is focused on businesses that are already here and retaining those businesses, allowing them to uh, improve and grow. So that part's there, but I do like the idea of, of speaking with businesses and getting that temperature and, and to uh, Mr. Silvera, uh, maybe something we could look at. I know you've met with the BIA, you've met with the chamber, but perhaps we could look at something like a, a semi-annual meeting where they know ahead of time, maybe they know we, we, we pick a, a month and that that meeting, we're going to have our economic development officer there. It gives an opportunity to people, for people to prepare and maybe actually have some businesses come out to the meeting as well, not just have the chamber members or the BIA members, if they know that they're going to have the ear of the economic development officer. So I would suggest that is something we can do where you're getting that firsthand uh, information and people will tend to come out and they'll tend to open up when they know they're talking to the person who can make a difference. So uh, maybe something like that would help us out. I know you go anyway, but if we have it published, they know you're going to be there, uh, we might get some good data that way as well. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Councilor Snively. Your Worship, uh, to Nelson. All the business that we have in both centers, are they on our website? All, our, all the new businesses that's coming into town? One thanks. Through your worship, we don't have a business directory for all businesses. We have a business directory on our tourism website for tourism-related businesses. Um, if you want, that's something that we could look into. 
Um, but right now, what we're trying to do is, with our tourism website, is uh, marketability for those uh, businesses that are direct for destination. The re further to that, Your Worship, the reason I'm asking, okay, there is specialty stores, okay? Like we just had one open in the South Park, the uh, Sabrina's Wellness Center, okay? Specializing in oils and, you know, THC and, and, and but I mean, this, this is a, a specialty store. How can we promote a new business coming in so she gets the support. You know what I'm saying? Uh, these these types of business, all, all our businesses should be on a website. So the public can open up our website and see what we have have to offer retail in both centers. Through your worship, I mean, I can't speak to that particular business, but uh, I know moving forward with uh, the tourism yeah. website, we're gonna be looking at um, including all, uh, all retail in 2018, we're hiring a, a summer student again uh, who takes amazing photos where she's gonna go to um, a lot of those retail, restaurant, gift shops types of businesses and take pictures, develop content, and uh, she shares the pictures with the business so they have those photos uh, to share in their own marketing purposes. And then we give them a page on the website as well and we're gonna promote them through social media and enhancing our tourism marketing in 2018. It's all gonna go all and coincide with that as well. Further, just one, and uh, Councillor Rogers just mentioned, he's right, it should be the whole town. Like, we, we have bed and breakfasts, all, all those retail outlets should be on our website. The public should be aware of it. Anybody coming into the area, where am I going to stay? You know, you got the bed and breakfast on the website. Through, through your worship, we, uh, currently we have about 40 businesses on the, um, on the Tourism uh, Essex website, and it is throughout the whole municipality. In fact, the majority of them are in the southern part of the municipality because that's where a lot of our tourism base is. So, but we're trying to spread it out this year and uh, focus on some of the downtown retail as well and work them into the website so that we can have a, a larger audience and a larger, um, a larger business base within the, within the website. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Bondi. Thank you. Just to conclude, I am interested in any information you have to bring back on business retention and expansion programs from OMAFRA. Councilor Berkman. And, and just if I can, uh, again to Mr. Silvera, is the is there a tag on our website for the uh, the Essex Center BIA and for uh, Harold Chamber of Commerce? Are they linked? Through your worship, there are links on, on the website for um, the BIA and the Chamber, yes. Okay. On, on the Essex.ca website, yes. Great. So that's, yeah, not on the tourism site, but on our homepage. And the Essex BIA keeps a, con a full list of businesses in town. The Colchester, uh, Colchester, sorry, the Harrow Chamber of Commerce has a full list of businesses there. So those are available through our website. And when people are looking, I generally, if I'm going to another town, I look up their Chamber of Commerce, I look up their BIA. Now, what that doesn't help is those other businesses down 50, the businesses on Isler, the businesses. So those people we need to get together with and find a way uh, to tag that group. Because it's a lot easier if you're going after a group to, to click on a tag and you've just got a drop-down menu that says, here's everything. So a little further uh, work there, but most of our businesses are on a site that's linked to our, our web page. Mr. Severa. Please. Through your worship, I would, I would uh, encourage council actually to take a look at the tourism directory because there are a lot of those businesses that you speak of that aren't necessarily within a, a downtown center, but they're a home-based business or they're a, a business that's on County Road 50 that maybe doesn't get as much recognition, but, but by the work that we're doing, we're trying to get out there and show them that not, there's a destination out there that's maybe not in a, an urban area, but more in the rural centers as well. So. Okay, anyone else? I just have a couple comments, and of course the, the one is the worst one. Uh, we were accused, Council and the BIA, and as Council revokes his own words, he was there, and I know another Council member that was there, and I know the BIA was there more than once, so when we get talking with these people, we got to be hesitant to what and who we believe, because Everyone saw the article in the paper blasting us, and everyone should have read the article that said that wasn't true. But uh, not only do we need to help our businesses, which we all want to do and are doing, 
we have to get those business people together too and ask them, what can you do to keep your store open or your neighbor's store open? It's just not us doing everything for them. They got to be part of this solution also. So remember that one. With that, ready for the question. All in favor? Oh, no. She, yes, she did make that motion. Yes. All in favor? Motion carries. Okay. Item 15.1.2 uh, is a motion from Councillor Vokes. The council discussed the letter that was sent to the Minister of Health inviting him to town council and his lack of response and to further discuss what is council's position regarding emergency care in our community. And I'd just like to point out that when we were on the correspondence under 11.1.1 .1, that um, the, uh, there's been a change in the Minister of Health. And so we drafted a letter to the new Minister of Health, Dr. Helena Jasek, I think is her name. Um, Jack. Jack, 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 okay. Um, ask, uh, basically, uh, offer asking, uh, extending the same invitation that we had extended in our second letter, and those appear under 11.1.1. .1. Okay, and before we go to Council Folks, I have Mrs. Hunter. See you. Through you, Worship. Um, as a result of talking to Councillor Vokes um, regarding this notice of motion, I believe because we've sent that letter, um, Mr. Vokes was comfortable with waiting to see if we got a response before doing anything with this notice of motion. So I think we'll just table it for now and come back to it when we get a response. Councillor Vokes. Thank you, if I could. And I just want to make a note on this file for Council to understand. And, for the, and, and just real quickly, for the government to understand. We sent that letter. We sent that letter, as you see here, originally November 8th. They responded November 23rd, saying to us, saying to us through the Eric Hoskins office, saying to us that they're too busy to come to the town of Essex to talk to the mayor and the council because they're just simply, his office is too busy. That was November 23rd. On November 1st, he was in Windsor. He was actually right in Windsor. He drove right by us. Announcing, by the way, a huge, huge sum of money for the new mega hospital. Millions and millions and millions of dollars. They got money for the mega hospital and get behind the project, but people are dying in our emergency care every day. And that's what I want to talk to them about. And I also hope that, that the clarity of that letter is cleared up in sending it, if we have, have sent it already. And if we haven't, because I'll tell you why. If you look here, it says November 8th, a correspondence to Honorable, Honorable Dr. Eric Hoskins inviting him to the council, Essex Council meeting to discuss health matters in the region. So they sent a, they sent a, a letter back November 20th, and I'm sorry for, for delaying this, but they sent a letter back November 23rd saying, hey, uh, we regret, but he, he can't make it. And then, but then January 3rd, we send another letter back. The first letter said health matters. And then January 3rd, we send a letter back that says emergency care and procedures. So whoever's in control down there at a health level who can help is going, okay, what do they want here? Right? So I just want to make sure that the letter that is being sent or has been sent is two things. One, to Kathleen Wynn also. And secondly, that my only concern is, is my main concern is emergency care. I, only, I want to whittle away at it. I don't want to take on the whole health problem because we're not a big enough council to do that respectfully. But I certainly want to talk to them about emergency care. And our residents every day are suffering as a result of going through that emergency care. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'll have our clerk substitute <laughs> read the letter for you. Clerk substitute? No? Deputy Clerk. Okay. Yes, Councillor Vokes, uh, just so that you know, the letter was sent on March 12th, and it says, by way of letter dated January 3rd, Essex Town Council extended an invitation to former Minister of Health, Dr. Eric Hoskins, asking him to attend a future council meeting to discuss short and long-term plans regarding health matters in the region. A copy of the letter has been enclosed for your perusal. To date, Council has not received a response to that request. We wish to congratulate you on your new appointment as Mr. Minister of Health. We would also like to extend the same invitation to you and ask that you give consideration to attending a future meeting of Essex Town Council. And we enclosed a list of meeting dates. 
that's what your original motion said. If you'd like to clarify that it is related to emergency care, we can send um, a new letter. I want to clear it up. I'm going on record to the to the 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 clerk. My my original letter, and if it did, when and you can look at it in YouTube. I never I never my concern wasn't emergent wasn't health care. My concern was and look it up on YouTube and then call me tomorrow and tell me I'm wrong. My health my concern was emergency care. As a result of going to emergency myself, I was in there and I looked around at the conditions. That's what stemmed me to say this is horrible. There's 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 pregnant women bending over in pain. There's people where they're coming out and working on them because they're clutching their chest with, the, with heart attacks. I'm getting blood work done with six people in a gurney in front of me. So anyways, that's why it was, was specific to emergency care and not health care as a whole. That, but don't get me wrong, I, I hope we could arrest the concerns of health care. My point was emergency care. That's what I wanted to talk to him about, saying you got, you got, people are spending seven and eight hours waiting to get emergency care in our emergency rooms. And I just wanted to talk to the government about a way of enhancing that. That's all. Okay, Mrs. Hunter, see you. Through you, Your Worship, just uh, to Councilor Rokes, we will send a revised letter to them tomorrow. To administration as a whole, thank you very much. I, I, and don't get me wrong, I really appreciate your efforts efforts. All I want to do is make sure there's clarity of our request. That's all. Thank you. Okay, seeing as how we're not dealing with this, notice a motion this evening. Can I get a motion to table? Okay. Randy. All in favor? Table. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, and uh, tonight we have the two motions, the two new notices of motion brought by uh, Councillor Rogers at the beginning of the meeting. I can reread re those if necessary, otherwise they will appear on the next agenda for discussion. Anyone want them read? Okay. I'm good. Yep. Okay. That's fine. Very good. Item number 16 is reports from council members. And then, oh, councillor votes. This is the section of the, of the meeting where, where the CAO had referred to me earlier about going on record in a motion, so I'll take opportunity to do that. So, so I, I'd like to put a motion forward for discussions at the next council meeting that, that all of Essex is included in the CIP program and that if need be, we take money out of reserve to support. Okay, reports from the council members. Councilor Bunn, he's out of her chair, so we'll start with Deputy Mayor Malage. Maybe she'll be back. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have nothing to report. Okay. Council vote. All set. Thank you. Council Bjork. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a couple of upcoming events uh, that would be great. Uh, Friday the 23rd, um, Essex United Church will be hosting the uh, Windsor Symphony at uh, 7 o'clock. So that's this Friday night. And uh, next Saturday, our... Uh, is the Eckers annual fund fundraiser. I always have to read it to get the right words. So that's the Essex and Community Historical Research Society has their uh, annual celebration fundraising dinner hosted at the Royal Canadian Legion. Uh, dinner's at 5.30 and tickets are $20. So come out and support our, uh, our historical society. Thank you, sir. Councilor Rogers. I think Councilor Snively. And I'm the same. Councilor Bonding gets back. Larry, you ask her on the side if she would like to give any announcements, okay? I might miss her. Uh, item 17 is announcements, but I think we've covered that. 
Item 18.1, bylaws that require a third and final reading. First one is bylaw 1681 to provide for rules of procedure for the conduct of meetings. Moved by Councillor Bjorkman, supported by Councillor Rogers. And any comments or questions? Uh, I think it's pretty easy reading. I think we should all read it. Here we go. All in favor? Motion carries. Bylaw 1683 being the confirming bylaw for the proceedings uh, from March 5th, 2018 regular council meeting. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Pardon? My apologies. It's no, difficult no, no, no. to get all my parts going at the same time. <laughs> Need a mover and a seconder then? Deputy Mayor Malas and Country Berkman. Questions? All in favor? Item 18.2, bylaws requiring first, second, thir third, and final reading. First one is bylaw 1685, um, a bylaw to provide for an interim tax levy and to provide for the payment of taxes, to provide for penalty and interest. Moved by Councillor Rogers and Councillor Snively. Any questions? All in favor? Oh, carries. Uh, bylaw 1687 is the second one requiring for second and third reading. It's a bylaw to appoint a weed inspector for the town of Essex, and uh, that weed inspector would be Norm Nuzio. Moved by Councillor Bjorkman, supported by Councillor Vokes. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Deputy Mayor Malash and Council of Oaks, any questions? <coughs> Excuse me, all in favor? Motion carried. Looking for adjournment. <coughs> Council Bjorkman and Deputy Mayor Malash. All in favor? Always in order. Thank you. Have a great evening, everyone. <laughs>